Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to my channel. I'm John the Video Guy and in this video I'm going to be covering color correcting 101 inside Premiere Pro. So I went out shot some drone footage actually for the first time I got my drone pilot's license and I'm going to color correct the footage because you know being my first time we need to color correct it. So let's dive into Premiere Pro. I'm going to show you guys the features of how to color correct this footage. So I have the clips on the timeline and a quick note, I didn't shoot in D-Log or any other fancy settings here when I went out to shoot drone footage. So this is just your standard MP4 MOV type of footage here. So you know, being my first time, it is a little underexposed. The colors are a little flat, but we can always brighten this up in post. If you guys are curious on the drone that I'm using, I'll link that down in the video description as well if you guys are into drones. But to get into the color panel, what we're going to do is go up to the top and click color, and this will bring up the color workspace. And in here, you'll see the Lumetri color panel to the right. And then if we click and drag this side, bring up Lumetri scopes, we'll see our scopes for each of the different areas here. All right, so before we start color correcting, there's an important part that you have to understand first when working with Lumetri Color. And that's the difference between adding a color correction effect to the source clip and just the individual clip in the timeline. You can actually add color effects to the whole entire clip as a source or the actual individual clip in the timeline. So for example here, say I have this clip selected on the timeline, if I wanted to just color correct this clip specifically. On the top you see that there's source and that there's drone clip, drone clips here. And the right side is the individual clip in the timeline. The left side, if you click on source, it's going to add this color effect to the actual source clip here in the project panel. So no matter where it is throughout your timeline, this color effect is going to affect all your clips. But if you wanted to just affect the one clip, this clip specifically in the timeline, you would select the right side here. So the first panel is basic color correction. And the first thing you'll notice is input LUT. So if you are working with log footage and you have a LUT input LUT that you want to add, you can click this and click browse. In this case, I'm not working with log footage, so I'm just going to color correct this by hand. The first thing when you're under the basic color correction tab is you'll want to adjust your white balance if it is off. Now in this photo here, to get a good white balance, you'll see that there's a white balance selector. What you'll want to do is try to find something white in your scene. In this case, I'm going to try to select that truck in the background. So I'm going to go to my fit, my zoom feature here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit, grab my hand tool, and drag to that truck and then I'm going to select the eyedropper tool and then click on the white area in the truck and this will automatically adjust the temperature in the tent levels to that white surface. And then if we go back to fit you'll see that it kind of adjusted it made it a little bit warmer and you can see the before and after by clicking this checkbox in the top right to see what it has done so far. So that's white balance. Under white balance there's tone. So you can set exposure, which is just how open the aperture is. Very similar to like the camera settings. So this is a little dark, so I'm going to increase it a little bit. To see color accuracy, what you'll want to do is open Lumetri scopes. And over here you'll see two different things. If you see some, something different, you can always right click and choose what you want to see. I always like seeing the parade RGB and the vector scope. Basically the parade shows the luminance and the vector scope shows the hue and saturation of different colors. So how to read this is from the bottom, zero is dark black and 100 is white. So, and these are the different colors displayed in RGB. So very um, clear to see that the reds are here, greens are here and blues are here. You can see blues are more dominant in you know, the shadows and, and the highlights and red is more in the mid-tones. And then on the right side, we have the vector scope, which shows the, the saturation displayed in kind of like this blob in the middle. You'll notice that it is pretty desaturated, so by default, it is pretty small. But if this was more saturated, these edges would go closer to the edges of these points. 
All right, so now that we have the Lumetri scopes open, let's start adjusting some of these settings and seeing how they, they affect it. So as you can tell, if you increase the exposure, the Lumetri scopes is gonna go up. And if you increase the contrast, it's gonna increase the contrast, the difference between the whites and the blacks here. And a good rule of thumb is your highlights should be somewhere between 80 to 100 not clipping at past 100 and your highlights should be between 0 and or your darks or shadows should be between 0 and 10. You don't want anything clipping on the bottom either. But you want to expand this as much as possible to get the most range from it. So we're going to expand this out, give it some contrast. We're going to bring down the highlights so the highlights are just your lights. Try to bring back the whites and the clouds here. Shadows you can increase or decrease here. So you'll notice that basically the low ends are getting adjusted when you slide this. So we'll bring it up a little bit. And then the whites and blacks. So these adjust the actual white and black points of your footage here. So, you know, if you bring up the blacks, you can see you're bringing actually the black level up. And what you'll want to do is just bring it down until they start touching at the very bottom. And same with the whites. <clears throat> but I wouldn't recommend doing this. It really depends on the footage. You'll notice the white is the whites in this shot are really the sky. And you know, for my personal preference, I want to try to keep the clouds in the sky. So I'm gonna try to go around 80, 85 here. I'm gonna bring down the highlights a little bit more. You can see some of the detail in the clouds a little bit. Next is saturation, so you can bring it up, and you'll notice when you saturate it, that right side, the vector scope, increases. And same thing when it comes to clipping, you don't want the colors to be outside of this shape here. The hexagon, I believe, six sides, yeah. So you don't want it to be outside of that, and you don't want it to look too weird as well, so it comes down to personal preference depending on your shot. For now, I'm going to leave it around 115. Now, if you guys are uncomfortable using this, there is a new feature called Auto, where it will automatically adjust the tone for you. So if you want, you can click that, and it will automatically adjust it to the way it thinks it, um, it should do it. And it's following the same principles. You'll notice that it pushes the highlights up. It gives a lot of contrast. It adds a lot of saturation. It tries to extend a lot of the shadows and the midtones. But, you know, for me, I don't really want to overexpose it that much. You can see it really overexposed the sky. So I'm going to undo that for now. And if I want, I can bring up the shadows independently here and maybe a little bit of the contrast here. This looks more natural for me. All right, so that is basic color correction. Under creative, this is where you can get creative with your shots. Uh, hence the name, the creative tab. But, you know, I did make another video going over LUTs, how to use and install LUTs, so I'll link that up here if you want to learn more. That's more in color grading. In this tutorial, I want to really focus on just correcting your footage, making it look natural. If you have different issues, how to adjust it to get back to, you know, a level place. And then you can start really manipulating your footage in a way by using LUTs and different color grading techniques. So we're going to skip this section for now. We're going to go down to Curves. So curves is really nice. If you have an overcast in your image of a certain color, you can bring that down using the curves panel. So for example, the highlights here are really blue. So say if you wanted to bring down this blue here, what you can do is click on the blue value in the curves, bring down the highlights a little bit. And you'll notice that it brings down the highs and the blues here. And say if you wanted to bring up the reds, you can click on red and you can bring up the reds. I should have explained how to use this curves, what this is actually displaying. So the bottom left is your shadows and blacks, and the top right are your highlights and whites. So similar to this, but kind of displayed diagonally, if you will. The midtones are in the middle. So for example, if you clicked on white and you brought this up, you're actually expanding the midtones, but you are um, the highlights and the sh the highlights and the shadows are the same. You're just bringing up the middle area here. And this is where you can really control the different areas when it comes to maintaining shadows, highlights, 
but bringing up the midtone. So you can see, you can still see some of the blue in the clouds and the shadows, but the midtones now are a lot brighter. All right, so that's how you use the curves panel here. Now, if we scroll down, there's a few different options and they all kind of work the same. So I'll go over the first one. First, you have hue versus saturation. What this is saying is that you can adjust the saturation of a specific hue. With the eyedropper tool to the right, if you select it, you can select a hue basically to change the saturation of. So say if we want to make the grass more greener, more saturated, you can click on a green area in the grass and you'll notice these points. So what you can do is the center point is the actual hex code that the eyedropper selected. What you can do is click and drag this up to saturate it more. So you'll notice that the greens are getting more saturated and more of the yellows. And you can see this reflected inside the vector scope to the left. And if you want to expand this range, you can click on one of the outside dots and hold down shift and you can actually extend these, extend the range out a little bit. Now you can see the difference, you know, if you uncheck and check the box, you can see the greens and the yellows are a lot more saturated. So that's the curves panel. Next we have the color wheels and match. And I forgot, I just noticed at this point, I actually added it to the individual clip. So say if you added this color correct to the clip, but you want it to the whole thing that I was talking earlier, where it does it to the whole thing, this is how you do that. So you can see that I'm in the, you know, we're adding this effect to this specific clip. But if you wanted to actually add this color correct to all of them, if you go to effects controls panel, if you can't see this, go to window effects controls. You'll notice that there's the lumetri color effect on this clip. If you click on it, go to edit copy. Then in the effects controls, you'll see that there is a source area. So you can actually go into the source panel and then go to edit paste. And this will paste that Lumetri color effect into the source clip. And you'll notice that it's applied to all the other clips in your timeline. If we go back to the clips here, we can actually delete this effect by clicking on it and then hitting the delete key on our keyboard. So now we have the source we go into the source panel of the Lumetri color, this effect is added to all the clips in the timeline, not just the individual clip. Whether to do this or not is really your preference depending on the footage that you're editing. You know, this clip, it looks good in the highlights, but this clip is a little, you know, lighter. So you might want to make minor adjustments depending on your entire shot. And that leads us to our next section, the color wheel and match. This is a very cool feature inside Lumetri Color where you can actually display, you know, the clip that you're working on and then a different clip in the timeline to try to match the shadows, midtones, and highlights of the clip. So in this example, we're going to click on comparison view to bring this up. And what we can do here, you'll see the right side is the current frame that we're on. And then the left side displays the whole timeline. And what you can do is actually go to a different clip in the scene Say if you wanted to match this clip with the color of that clip, you can click this apply match button and this will automatically analyze the footage and apply a type of look to the current footage matching this clip's footage. So there's a lot of matching going on, but you can also edit these manually if you want as well. So you can see you have controls over the shadows, midtones and highlights. You can bring up the shadows by just sliding this bar or decrease them by sl sliding it down. And then you can also edit the tint if you want as well by dragging this to a certain color. So basically it makes the shadows more bluer if you drag it this way. And same with the midtones and highlights. Now to get out of this, you'll want to click comparison view again to just go back to your current frame. Next we have HSL secondary, and this is more for color grading not really for color correcting. If you guys want to learn more about that, I did make a video on that. I'll link it right up here. Otherwise, that pretty much wraps up how to color correct different footage um, to go going through all the different tools. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to uh, write them down below in the comments. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.